At last, bull and horse had been beaten, and Kutaro's pride restored. But pride comes before a fall, they say. Expect plenty of dark twists and evil schemes as we stride into what I like to call Act Five. Let us continue our adventure. A short time ago, in a galaxy far from far away, with the power of Calibris and the might of the Four Champions, Kutaro had won victory after victory against the vicious Moonbear King. More than half the moon had been freed, and the noose was tightening around the tyrant as his moonstone shards were taken and his advantage slipped away. Kutaro's deeds of daring do had become a beacon of hope, and the beleaguered peoples of the moon were on the brink of rebellion. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro, may the forceps, <coughs> I mean scissors, be with you. Kutaro and Picarina were winding their way back to the wild waste when they got lost in a dense forest. And as dark clouds settled in overhead, our duo found themselves longing more and more for the light of the sun. Eesh. We're not in Kansas anymore. Ah! Hey, maybe we should, like, turn back. Yeah, I mean, getting lost would be a total bummer. Okay, back to the entrance. But alas, neither one of them had the foggiest idea from whence they came. Check it out. You're the hero of the moon, the big cheese. You took that bull by the horns and won, right, champ? Surely Kutaro was strong enough to wrangle a couple of trees. Look, you've got a moon to save and a sun princess to please. So man up, kiddo! As if he had a choice. The only road was forward, or whatever direction they were facing. So our hero steeled himself and pressed on. The pale blue light of the earth, his only guide. The headless horseman had driven Kutaro and Picarina right into the labyrinthine clutches of the snacker boss. What's this face doing in our face? I'll do a little recon. One chubby pumpkin. Looks like a bomb ought to light it up. And then there was... Ah! What's it doing? Um, our light just rolled off. Hurry! Want me to light a candle? Wax on, wax off. Even the candles are pumpkins.
generously. Kutaro and Picarina Ooh, continue their oh, trek oh, through the mean. dense and licorice black sugar shadows there's of a the snack. There's pumpkins and there's plumpkins. Want to light them up? Kutaro fumbled through the murk, shredding sweets as he went. What a waste of good dessert. Don't worry, my dear. The stage crew will eat the leftovers. The who? Chocolate bars! Just for smashing. Once upon a time, there lived a poor little puppet named Kutaro. From dawn till dusk, a horrible witch worked Kutaro to the bone, while his wicked stepfriend, Picarina, laughed and called him names. Then one day, Kutaro used his fairy head magic to turn an ordinary pumpkin into an impressive coach that carried him right to Prince Moonbear King's doorstep at the Black Castle. But the magic expired prematurely, and as Kutaro fled, he dropped his real head along with his personality and memories on the castle steps. <laughs> what kind of goofball Cinderella story is that? Uh, first of all, get your casting right. I am so not the wicked stepfriend. There's no such thing as a stepfriend. Besides, I'm pure-hearted and kind and beautiful. Everyone loves me. I should be cast as a princess. Obviously. You know, with tiara. I should be the star. Anyway, get your facts straight before I take my copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales and whack it over the head. To him. Oh, please! Anybody! I'm afraid of ghosts! I'm fine with crows, but ghosts scare me out of my britches! Uh, that's nice. But if you really want to thank us, tell us where the heck we are. Pardon? Oh, well, you're all uh, on the outskirts of Halloweenville. Cozy place till the Moon Bear King's generals come along and did stuff to the local pumpkins. Did stuff? That's right! They made it so snacks sprout all over them! Explains the candy and cookie trees. Ooh, I hope you didn't all eat them. 
because the townsfolk that did all turned into half of monsters. Just desserts, you might say. <laughs> What was that? Wolves? Ha! So I had dogs. General Dog. He's all that stops us from running for the hills. Come on, Kataro. Let's whip that puppy and take his Moonstone Shard. through the snacker bosk's shadowy branches. Uh, uh, don't worry, Kataro. I've got your back. <laughs> Our hero blazed on like a flaming pumpkin in the darkness. No chasm could razz him as he coursed past the dire morsels. He was going to get through this forest and put an end to General Dog. of pumpkins. Oh! What's sealed inside this one? To keep the snacker boss dark, someone had rounded up most of its fires. Yes! Oh, finally this place will lighten up. <laughs> Just outside the bosk, General Dog stood watch like some great Stygian hound. You are Firewood. So this is General Dog. Huh? Wait a second. He's on a leash. Whoa. Huh? What leash? You know, maybe we should just ignore him. Yeah, let's go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, don't go. Do you mind? We're in a hurry. Whoa. All I want is for that nasty moon bear king woo, woo. to scratch my ears. Ugh, scratch this! Woo, woo, woo. Are we playing? Oh my gosh! Come on, Kataro. Woo, woo, woo. Please, just for a minute. No way! Woo, woo. Look at me. You know, I think I'm a cat person. Woo. I am big and strong. Woo. If you beat me, you can have my moonstone piece. <laughs> We'd get that anyway. I know you love me. Uh, let me count the ways. Oh boy, she does. Could this quite possibly be the dumbest animal I've ever seen? What do you say, Katara? Should we throw him a bone? 
was a sugary sucker punch to the appetite. Their eyes started at the fluffy whipped cream snow on the milk chocolate shingles and wandered longingly down crispy, crunchy cookie walls until they found the sticky temptation of the candy windows. Their minds were still toying with thoughts of macaroon molding and Baumkuchen banisters when their eyes wisely decided to shut up and let them smell the darn thing. Oh my gosh, yummy! Do you, do you think they would mind if we took a bite? We haven't eaten in, like, minutes. No, 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 must not eat delicious house. We need to get the Moonstone. <laughs> I have you! What the? <laughs> Gajaro, your belt is spewing gas! Oh, flawless victory! <laughs> it was a trap. 
our champ had stopped to chomp just long enough for the chimp to make a chomp on him. With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. After braving the Snackabosk and taming its watchdog, our hero finally met his match. A house of dangerously delicious confections. But try as he might to resist, Kutaro's fate had already been sealed by the belt about his waist. And so the story continues. Behold, Halloween Veal, where every ghost worth his sheet loved a good scare. If you manage to spook someone out of their treats, then by George, you've done your job. However, that was before the Moon Goddess vanished, and sly General Monkey played a real trick on Halloween Veal. He ousted the town's mayor and the ghastly mayoral family from their haunted house, converted the building into a laboratory, and once settled in, Monkey began doing things to the town's produce. You see now the awesome scrumptious tastiness of Monkey's pumpkin creations? The first bite is heaven, but then the cookie crumbles! <laughs> the Moonstone Shards are back in our clutches! The Moonbear King will be most pleased! I would be mad to give up this kind of power. <laughs> Think of the experiments I could conduct. Not while I'm around. <laughs> round indeed! I, monkey, shall use these moonstone pieces in my experiments. Now make like a banana and peel! You creep! Nobody cracks jokes like that on lives. I'll get you! Just as soon as I can... Oh, me ouch! Now that is perfect. <laughs> oh, you poor plump dears. What a shame on you for stuffing your piggy little faces! You can yell at us later! That ape ran off with our moonstone shards! This is horrible. Those stones have the power to restore magic and memory, but now you've messed everything up! Kotaro, you are a special boy, especially stupid! Ah! Stop lecturing us! Change us back to normal if you want our help! Oh, but magic can only undo magic. You may have been charmed into eating those sweets, but the sweets themselves were no smell. You pig out, you get fat. That's just nature. Wait, what does that mean? You can't fix us? We'll be chubs forever! I said magic can't fix you, dummy! You got yourself fat, now get yourself thin! But it can't be that easy! Oh, nothing is ever easy. And I'm gonna make sure this isn't... Ow! <laughs> Stop it, you Big sweating porky, time's a-wasting! Oh, all I need is the moonstone and Calibrus. It's all I need! You know you could just give up and stay an ugly, pathetic witch forever. Yang Yang! <laughs> so, the witch is the one pulling the strings. This awesomely juicy morsel should come in handy. <laughs> General Monkey's tasty trap had turned our poor hero into the Lord of Lard. From shrimp... 
to blimp. Oh, man. We need a diamond. And did he Roll ever. <laughs> Sorry. And I just to say he raced into a slimmer future, flab jiggling in the winds of change. Kuturo had plenty of pounds to spare as he demolished rock, bridge, and foe. His globe-like body was a microcosm of his struggles, as if some mini Kuturo was slicing away with Calibrus of the layers of fat. Your greatest enemy is your All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> to narrow the divide between the fats and the fat knots, someone had the bright idea to ration food up. All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> to narrow the divide between the fats and the fat. All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> to narrow the divide between the fats and the fat knots, All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> to narrow the divide between... All of human history can be traced along our wastelines. Agriculture and then food storage eventually separated men into the plump and the poor. Call it fatocracy. <laughs> to narrow the divide between the fats and the fat knots, someone had the bright idea to ration food. It was called communism. Want bread? Line up! Don't be like those unhealthy fatocrats. But communism ultimately lost out. No five-year plan could wean people from the temptation of all that caviar and vodka. It was hard work, but Kutaro shed the pounds. Having doffed his mantle of corpulence, he could once again... At the end of his pot-bellied... 
uh, stout-hearted slog through self-imposed emaciation, Kutaro had wandered right into Halloween Veal. Oh, this is much better. Give me candy, or die. Um, I don't think that's how Halloween works. The pumpkin monster attacked with vicious geezers of cream filling. At this rate, Kutaro and Pecorino would be drowned. If we get the cream off the roof, we might be able to slam the house back to normal. I feel sick. Ugh, oh, I haven't seen this much projectile vomit since my sorority days. Oh, get me out of here! See the juice? That's where the pumpkins bounce. You'll never escape! He's screaming the houses! Fix them so we can keep going! There was no safe haven for our dashing duo. Halloween Veal was clearly out to get them. Oh, is there no escape? Kutaro and Picarina avoided almost certain nashing. I'll chew you yet! Are those gooey places cavities? That that would hurt if you attacked them. You can't toss a bomb in with that goop in the way! Now! Chuck a bomb into the cavity! I'll trap you forever! This time, the pumpkin monster kept his jaw clapped shut, leaving neither nook nor cranny to crawl out of. They were trapped. Let's just get away from the teeth! Now this looks like a nice mushy cavity! Slap it to me, You monsters! Gobbled up a lot. Tigers, snakes, whales, and now a pumpkin. 
Remember, cavities can lead to bad breath, gum disease, loss of hearing, and death. Don't forget to make that dentist. Loss of hearing? That's a new one. Heights to Halloween Beatles, lack of orthodontists. Kutaro and Picarina avoided almost certain mashing. What do you get? Are those cooey places cavities? That that would be an attack. I'll trap you forever. This time, the pumpkin monster kept his jaw clamped shut, leaving neither nook nor cranny to crawl out of. They were trapped. Now this looks like a nice mushy cavity. Slam it to pieces! You monsters! I guess the moral here is, think about what you eat. Otherwise, your food might kick you in the teeth. Actually, we get gobbled up a lot. Tigers, snakes, whales, and now a pumpkin. We see more action than a gastroscope. Remember, cavities can lead to bad breath, gum disease, loss of hearing, and death. Don't forget to make that dentist appointment. Loss of hearing? That's a new one. Here we go! Hello, cavity! <laughs> See what happens to gluttons for punishment? That was experience talking. Of cavities that only worsened the pumpkin monster's depravity. He was done savoring. This was one meal that needed to die and be forgotten. of everyday life. My soul will never be free. That's crazy talk. We just freed you big time. I am Nebula, Nebula Oblongata, the existential wanderer of the cosmos of the soul, and yet prisoner of the fleshy coils of my impending adolescence. You're a ghost? So is everyone in Halloween. People insist I am the mayor's daughter, but they are deceived by illusion. They do not realize I am a ray of blazing light in a galaxy of darkness, cast out by the gods and saddled with this cage you ordinary fools would call a body. Um, that's nice. Well, if you're the mayor's daughter, maybe you've seen this guy, this monkey guy? He totally swiped our goods and we want him back. Yes, the simian is conducting experiments in the haunted house in the center of town. 
The place I called my literal home. Well, Kitaro, let's go! Wait! What? Uh, don't do that! General Monkey has transmogrified the haunted house into a laboratory. It is a fell crucible of tin and iron, a portentous labyrinth of tubes and tinctures. To set foot inside would be to bring down the hammer of your own doom. Unless, of course, you enter through the unspeakable door. Unspeakable? You just spoke it. So, I take it you know where the door is? Yes, it was my literal home. Then could you, uh, show us? Impossible! Monkey stole my key to the unspeakable door. Of course he did. But not the mayor's. Okay, great! So where's the mayor? In the one place where the haggard robes of mortality can be shrugged aside. Upon the golden bridge that separates life from death. Right. And... translation? The graveyard! With the help of Calibrus, Kutaro defeated the menace and saved the souls of a lucky few. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. Kutaro survived the most larduous of tasks, a gauntlet of tummy aches and toothaches. After fasting as fast as feasible, he made his way to the graveyard to find the mayor, and hopefully a key to the stolen moonstone pieces. Now back to Kutaro's tale. Before his stint as a scientist, General Monkey was a brilliant mime who made everyone laugh. But being laughed at always rubbed him the wrong way. Determined to better himself, he studied hard and used his evil inventions to get in the Moonbear King's good graces. His piece of the Moonstone made him the smartest creature around. Smart enough to build Castle Grizzlestein, and smart enough to turn Halloween Veal's pumpkins into wickedly tempting snacks. Now, within his laboratory in the haunted house, he was combining Kutaro's seven Moonstone shards with the one that General Dog already had to create an abomination unlike any the Moon had ever seen. You know, moon folk used to flock to Halloween Veal just for the thrill of it. Of course, once the Moon Bear King rose to power and real terror took hold, tourism took a nasty, nasty plunge. The ghost town turned into a... well, you know... Huh? You see? This place isn't so scary. Now, how exactly are we supposed to get in? Oh, mister? Hey, mister, could you unlock the gate for us? Ah! It... it's open. Here they were, in the scariest corner of the scariest part of the moon. Fortunately, not even the most horrible of deaths could deter brave Kutaro from his search for the mayor. After you! Yes, Kutaro mustered all his courage and faced the dangers ahead. <clears throat> I say, Kutaro summoned all his courage because if he didn't find the mayor and get the key to the haunted mansion, the Moonstone Shards would be lost forever. Clearly, Kutaro needed a little persuasion. Oh, get your hiney in gear, you chicken! Dauntlessly, which means not in a scared way, Kutaro strode into the graveyard. As an owl's plaintive hoo 
issue from the now near trees. Our hero felt a pair of feel someone had dug unpleasantly deep. Finally, six a little let. We're not alone. We're not alone. No ghosts. Look, there's a path. Come on. There go the cock. No, the spider went gummed it up. We're going down there again. trick of hyperbole, Kutaro found his way blocked by a coffin of epic proportions. Yeesh! Let's leave this up! Uh, uh, just that! Okay, a lot of oops! Darn! Guess the coffin will have to stay shut! Oh well! hands burst from underfoot, ready to drag Kutaro straight into the dark depths. It was one of the three tights Kutaro met back in the Black Castle's kitchen.
I want to suck your blood. I hear something. There must be something in here. The ghost transformed into a swirl of darkness and effortlessly dodged Kutaro's attacks. Then, suddenly, a ray of sunlight bounced off the earth and pierced through the dark clouds above. Of course! Light! Dark things hate the light! Think you can find some way to bounce it at him? No point in slamming! Swelling overhead, swoop down and transformed into a horrible weaver. Weaver swung his deadly side, but Kutaro wasn't ready to give up the ghost just yet. Bravely he fought back, using the mighty shield to douse the fiend in Earth's holy light. his wicked powers to block the light pouring in from Earth. Graveyard conquered. Kutaro was ready to. Silly girl. Daddy knows what he named you. Susan's a wonderful name. No, Susan is so plebeian. You can call this earthly vessel, but you can never name my soul. My name is Nebula. Nebula Oblongata. Wanderer of the cosmos. 
<laughs> I think we need to look into cancelling your library card. Susan! Susan! Stop it! Kutaro's efforts had galvanized the ghosts of Halloweeville, and now they rose as one. Armed with torches, they closed in on the haunted house, determined to have the monkey's head. Kill the monkey! Smash his head! Drink his blood! to us now. Let's go, Kataro! And so our Kutaro was left to face Monkey's machinations alone. He's not alone. Some might say the mayor's eldritch former estate made the perfect evil laboratory for General Monkey. The more he settled in, the more unsettling the place got. So, um... How do we get in? Huh? The front door? Oh, so I guess you want me to open it. <laughs> the master is not seeing anyone. I must ask you to leave. Let's use Calibre to cut our way around. Be away. Ahead, moon searchlights and the crocodiles under the eaves had undergone some wicked brain surgery. What was a hero to do? His sinister inventions patrolled every corner of the premises. The general trusted no one and operated all of these creations. Yes. Hero, Kutaro, set about slicing apart the evil General Monkey's laboratory like so much paper. Removing this blight on the town was a just act, motivated by justice just begun. It's like a light switch. Balls of electricity! Don't touch! Kutaro sliced and diced the hapless building until it was hardly recognized. Walls tumbled and columns crumbled until finally the mayor's... <coughs> Correction. The evil monkey's abode had been demolished. The monkey's gotta be in here. I can feel it. Show yourself, monkey! Give us back! Those moonstone shards you stole! <laughs> but they are right in front of you, my dear! What? <laughs> you will help me test my new bodacious experiment! General Robodog! Destroy Kutaro! <laughs> Acknowledged! Battery back melted! Is General Dog? What happened to him? Go, go, Robo Dog! Monkey has 
has omitted all of my primary functions. Discharge ready. Commencing discharge. One moonstone shard the richer, but Monkey had slipped right through their fingers again. As for the consequences, well, how could Kutaro know? He was just a puppet, not the one pulling the strings.
With a flash of Calibrus, Kutaro felled the frightful monster and freed the soul of every last child in the fiend's clutches. Well done, Kutaro! The souls he freed were homeward bound. <laughs>